Good day! Welcome to my channel, See No Art. My name is Kat, and I'm an artist as well as a nerd. And today we are continuing an art project, or two. So let's get started, shall we? Oh wow. Uh, like I said, I'm Kat, I'm an artist, I'm a nerd. I do both some video gaming as well as art. And today we're going to be working on Tom Nook and The Child, which is our two different projects that I've been working on since last week. So we're going to continue on uh, with that as well. So I hope that you're having a wonderful morning and I'm excited to have you here with me, hanging out and enjoying, hopefully with less camera problems. I had so many camera problems last week, so hopefully this will be better. So let me get the art nice and big, so that way we can see what we are doing. Alright, so what we're going to start off with is, uh, this is Baby Yoda, the child. Uh, has very many different names. They did not give a name to it um, in The Mandalorian, which is by Disney. So this is fan art. Um, and so I also realized, doing this, that I didn't, I didn't know that there was no gender specified either. It could be a girl Yoda. It could be a boy Yoda. It could be a they them Yoda. We don't know. So, oh, thank you, Ginger, for all uh, five bits. Enjoy your planko and perfect thank yous. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to see if I can move my chair. Lurp. Lurp. Hopefully my camera will handle that. Okay. So I have this little hot spot right here, which is my little butterfly, which I do... I do want to make sure that my little butterfly is the brightest part. I also wanted little ghosty butterflies. And I wanted to, um, this is very saturated, which is okay. I intended it to be very saturated because I was going to lay color on top of this. There's some special things about watercolor that you do um, when you lay color on top of it. You have to make sure that you don't get it too wet. Otherwise, you'll lift up the color underneath, unless that's your intention, which is not a bad thing at all. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some little ghosties around because I want to add a layer of like purple. Oh, I know, it's going crazy. So that way I can give like a halo glow to the butterfly and the halo glow will just basically cover Baby Yoda's face and hands, but make everything else just like melt into the background and we'll keep adding layers as we let layers dry. We'll keep going back, add more layers to increase the depth. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw, I'm gonna use, this is a watercolor pencil. Um, it says that it's um, Prussian blue, but uh, it's, I will use it very lightly because it is very dark. <laughs> Um, and doesn't really fade very much. So I'm just gonna lightly draw in some butterflies. I've been seeing quite a few butterflies out my window lately, which makes me happy. Little sulfur butterflies, little common butter, yellow, yellow flies. So what we're going to do is that when we add layers, we're going to kind of like treat these as like um, spots that will show the traditional blue underneath um, and we'll leave those that bluish color. So it'll give it, give it a little ethereal feel to it. about watercolor pencils is that it's not easy to erase so if you do make a mistake it's it's something that you want to do very lightly you don't really want to use too much a heavy hand at all with this so um, 
And I have a weird thing about wanting to have like odd amount of things in my compositions. So I'm just gonna make sure that these butterflies, there's just enough of them, but not too many. And I'm making them pretty big because I, I want people to enjoy the, the nice color of blue underneath because I really do love this wash that we we did. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna eliminate it. <laughs> it's going away, so I'm trying not to be too in love with it, but have enough butterflies that you can still see some of this beautiful light coming through because I don't really want to lose terribly a whole lot of light. Um, I still want it to feel alive, feel a part of it, so, um, but I do want to darken the rest of it though, to give it a little drama, to give it a little, a little bit of class. So, um, what I will do next is, um, I need to make a puddle. Puddles are exciting, right? So I'm going to do this off screen. So I'm going to take, let me find a part of my palette that is slightly clean. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of water. That way I can lift up some of this color, which I don't mind. I don't mind it being unique. And I will go into water. So making a puddle means that you are trying to create a little well of color. And since I don't use like a really big traditional palette or anything like that, um, it means that I have like this wonderful flat piece of paper that I use. Um, so I'm just gonna put make sure my brush is all clean, get all of that out. So notice that it's a little dirty, so that's okay. So I'm just gonna wipe away. I always have a rag in my drawer right next to me, so there's always a rag in my lap. Um, it's always good to have like a paper towel or a rag. I try to be kind of earth friendly. <laughs> My job is not inherently earth friendly, but I do try to be as earth friendly as possible. So that's why I use cloth rags. I use like um, these um, microfiber cloth rags because they have really nice texture and the absorbency is really good. So. And they're really good about like helping dry out your brush or other little things. Okay. So we're gonna focus on the sky first um, because I, I really do want this purple, but purple and green will make a beautiful brown which is not exactly what I want to do. So I want to make sure that when I'm painting over in like nice little glazing shades that I don't spend too long. I'm gonna have to be quick and efficient because anything that touches like the green here, if I activate the green underneath by getting my paper too saturated with water, I will make beautiful mud. I don't want to make beautiful mud. I worked really hard to have these this nice glowing color that hopefully will show through. It'll still look a little like brown, but that's okay. Um, Cause it'll really make this green punch out more and feel closer to us. So we're just gonna use those colors to help. So using the same brush that I used to make the puddle, so my my brush is really really wet, so I'm just gonna dab that on my on my cloth really quick to kind of take some of that edge off, so that way I'm not applying a whole lot of pigment all at once in one area. I kind of wanted it to be to be light, so that way you can move it around fairly quickly. Make sure that I am yep. So I'm going to use my brush to draw around these little butterflies and I'm going to, since I'm right handed, I'm going to work from the left hand side over because otherwise I will fail and I'll keep in mind like where the horizon line is, which I can kind of still see. 
Um, because we are gonna apply like green here to kind of give like, because currently we're floating in space, we'll add some more color here. But I wanted to establish the, the vibrancy of the sky before I did the grass. Um, because the grass is going to be laid on top of that sky and I kind of wanted to use it as an opportunity to make little fun things in the background. So what we'll do is we'll just take and we'll just very lightly just go around our little drawing. And this will activate the watercolor pencil. So there will be a little bit of a line that will stay no matter what we do, but that's okay because we'll I can't resist ink, you know I can't, so I will just keep, uh, I'm not worried about activating that watercolor pencil because it'll help one, make it fade, and two, um, it, will, it won't detract from it once we start adding any kind of like ink or anything like that. It'll feel intentional. It'll feel like we made this decision, um, and if you're not paying attention too close, it'll feel like we uh, went ahead and uh, added this really nice ink wash to it. So, so I'm just going to smooth out some of my rough edges. And I'm just going to work right up to the edge here. And I'm going to keep working in the round because all these edges are wet. And as I, have, I said the last time I started this, um, you want to make sure that you keep them wet. Because um, once they dry, um, there's like a line of pigment that you just really can't erase. Oops, we went over. That's okay. We're not, we are, and make sure that there's a lot of pigment on your brush. So that way you're not lifting. So if you don't have enough water, and it's a little bit of a trick to it, if you don't have enough water in your brush and enough pigment on your brush, you will start to lift up color, which means that you're, basically your brush becomes like a scrubbing tool. And I'll actually try to lift color above it because it's trying to get more, a brush's job is to, the bristles are to absorb water, which help move pigment around, which helps us do our job. So, But if you have enough water, that won't happen because um, there's enough water and pigment on your brush that you won't be lifting, you'll be laying down color, which is what we want to do. So let me just add this. So as you can tell, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, because we were working in the round and we were working in a slightly smaller section, and I'm going to go slightly below my intended horizon line, which is okay, um, because there would be that little bit of color there. That will help offset what's behind Baby Yoda versus what's in front, because whatever green we put on this is going to really glow, and then as we get further back behind Baby Yoda, that purple will help tone that color down. So I'm just going to look and make sure that I didn't miss any spots. It looks great. So then we basically use paint to draw all this and our butterfly is all done. So which is exciting because then we don't have to worry about it. Because um, I love seeing that little bit of color underneath. So what I'm going to do is um, my puddle got smaller so I'm going to add a little water to my puddle. I'm going to grab some more imperial purple. <clears throat> And I am going to leave this top part last. I'm going to work on this part next. So I'm going to move my erasers, move this over just a little bit. Um, before I do that though, what I will do is I will take a clean brush and put it in clean water. And I'm just going to dab the bottom of this line here. So that way there's not like a heavy line. So you won't see that line underneath. And I'll just use my terry cloth to kind of pick up that bottom of that clear water line so that way it doesn't do... It'll cause a little edge rippling um, a little bit, but that won't be bad because once I cover it with grass, I just didn't want like a straight line that you could see um, because when you glaze over a color, you can still see the background of it. So 
Okay, let me set that clean brush down. Let me grab my dirty brush. Well, it's dirty with the color we want to use, so it's really not that dirty. And let's make another puddle to ensure that we will get Okay, and then I'm going to touch my brush to my cloth to make sure that I, I have pigment on there, but I'm not overloaded with pigment. And we'll do the same thing. Um, since I've got a butterfly right down here towards the bottom, I'll start there first. And then I will keep work, working in the round to get all the way up to this top butterfly here. So we'll just use the edge of our brush. That's why I love this angle brush so much is that it can act like a liner, but still apply large washes as well. So we're just gonna move around this right here. We're just gonna draw all that little butterfly wing. We'll smooth out the edges. We'll do his elbow because that will be a solid line after that point. I still want to keep moving in the round because I don't want any of my edges to get dry. I don't want to get distracted. And as you can tell, um, because this is wet, it changes color um, versus dry. So the other side looks different. It's the exact same color, but it looks different. And it's for me, I'm okay with it uh, being slightly different in color um, because I plan to add another, at least one more layer to the sky. So I'm just going to put a little water down at the bottom and pull this across. And we're still going to work in the round, so I'm going to just do this really quick. That way we can keep working up. So. So just gotta move quickly um, to apply this wet wash down. So make sure that there's enough pigment. Ooh, I puddled a little bit. So the puddle is okay, but I'm just gonna have to work really quickly to move that puddle. So let me move this puddle up to the ear a little bit. Went over, that's okay. We're gonna apply There's another butterfly. Okay. Use my palette to flatten out my brush again. I do this. Move this down. So I went over so spectacularly. We'll just make that feel intentional. There are no mistakes. Uh, mistakes are something that only happen if you love, but you can always work around. There's always a workaround when it comes to art. I think that's why I like art, is that I don't ever feel, it's one, it's very relaxing, and two, I don't ever feel like I'm making a mistake. I'm still learning. I'm never, I'm never going to stop learning. So the more I do, the more that I experience, the more that I'm going to be able to become better. Um, to become like one of those, I, I follow so many artists, some of the artists that I just think are amazing and uh, I do want to be like them. Okay, so we finished that. So as you can already tell, the difference between the wet color here versus the color down here. This is already slightly dry. So, but I'm gonna see if I can take my clean brush, put it into some water, and see if I can just put, wait it a little too long, because there's definitely a line that I was talking about when it starts to dry, but I'll just lightly, I'll just lightly scrub, just really gently, see if we can just lighten that line up just a little bit. 
and then I'll use my towel to lift up any extra water because I don't want it to I don't mind it star bursting up up top but I just don't want to star bursting down down at the bottom so now it looks pretty much like baby Yoda is starting to have like there's a sky being established um, these butterflies look alive and bright because we didn't um, one we had a light wash underneath so we didn't ruin all the bright whites of the paper um, and there's because we chose butterflies in different color zones with our un first wash underneath we've got all these light movement and they all feel different, which is good. You want the variance. Um, this is how watercolor can work for you instead of against you. This is why I love watercolor. So then we're gonna work right up here at the top. So that way, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin Yoda around so that way I don't get my hands in what's currently drying. This is, the pigment is set um, and the paper is cold, which means that um, it's absorbing. I need to let this dry completely before I do anything else. As long as that paper is cold, I can lift up that color and the color underneath. Um, the same thing over here, this is very, very wet. I can tell even before I touch it that um, just by the color difference from the top to the bottom. So as this imperial purple dries, it turns more red, but as you apply it, it looks more like blue purple. So it's just the difference of dry versus wet pigments. So we're going to flip Baby Yoda over. Be very confusing to anyone just joining chat. <laughs> oh my gosh, and there was people. Hold on, just a second. Oh my goodness, there was lots of people. Okay. Hello, Reese. Hello, hello. Happy birthday, Reese. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday to you. Woo! There's your happy birthday song from me to you. Hope that you're having a good day, Reese. If you are still here, hello, Lomas. So, we <laughs> should get together and celebrate everyone's birthday in one giant party. Reese, I want to get all my friends together and we'll have a giant birthday party and everyone brings cake. No presents for everyone else, nothing like that. Just come over. Everybody's responsible of bringing birthday cake over. That way we can all try different kinds of birthday cakes. So you bring your favorite and you bring it to the party. That's, that's what I want to do. So. Oh, there's a dad joke. What do you get when you cross a rabbit with a water hose? A hair spray. <laughs> Cake and adult beverage bar, if you're old enough. I just want the cake, to be honest. Hi, Seven. Seven, did you come over here to say happy birthday? Uh, to, oh, uh, to Reese? Huh? Yeah, Tickle birthday. It's odd to have birthdays right now, but Seven thinks it's wonderful. I don't know if you can see his tail. You can see me petting a mysterious thing off to the side. I am petting the Seven, who is feeling much better, by the way. He had allergies really bad. Um, for the longest time and uh, he is feeling so much better now he is meowing and talking and demanding food so oh it's a happy song Tico boy we're gonna go into that that purple again yo and we're gonna make another puddle yes dad you want to make a puddle he's like I make puddles in my kitty litter box but nowhere else huh yeah <gasps> nummy nums! Oh my goodness, seven you appear and guess what? Ginger will give you nummy nums. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Let me grab my terry cloth so I don't apply wet pigment because and I'll just set that down. Alright, hold on just a second. That way you can see his little itty bitty tiny piece right there. Okay, let me grab the treats. Ada is sitting at the window and she's like, I see treats. And Newton is in bed right over there. So I should be able to give nummies for everyone. Who wants a yum yum? Do you want a yummy yum? Yummy yum. Bitty bitty tiny face. There we go. It's right there, buddy. Ada? Newton, I'm gonna toss it to you, Newton. You ready? Nope. Oh, well, you'll have an extra one for bed, I guess. Here, you can actually take this from me. Go. 
Munoz! Thank you so much, Ginger, for redeeming a num num. And if you're interested in redeeming a num num, just hit the little mouse right next to the little bar where you put in your chats, and you can redeem whatever you want. One of them being nummies. So, Seven just assumes that if I am talking into the void to no one in particular, he's just gonna get treats. So, and he's really good at getting treats off of the internet. So, let's switch this back over so we can keep working on. Uh, let's see. There we go. I do you like this song though? <laughs> seven puddles. He does have seven puddles. Uh, we make jokes all the time. Um, when I was in college, my friends would call him 7 Eleven, which. If you're, I don't know if there's 7-Elevens here in Indiana or the Midwest, um, but back where I'm from, 7-Eleven is a convenience store. So uh, we also call Seven the Seven Wonders. He has Seven Wonders. And we also call him, uh, we also call him Santa Claus. We call him Seven Claus. He only has seven presents and that's it. So we tease him a lot about number sevens with, and he only has seven lives instead of nine lives. Okay, I need a smaller puddle for up here. Um, the great thing about a trick about art is if you want something to appear very, very vibrant, you want dark darks next to um, white whites. It tricks your brain into thinking that that particular thing is super, super duper highlighted. So since this butterfly is the source of all of our light, um, that's the reason why the face will be illuminated, but the ears will fade out. Um, the hands will be illuminated because the hands are actually further away from the body. Um, I want to make sure that this purple here, which has been nicely divided by the ears from the rest of the purple, um, is super saturated, super dark. That's why the sky up here is darker. Fun fact, if you, if you want to look at the sky, how you know the earth is round. Walk out into a place where you can kind of almost see the horizon line and see the blue sky above. And notice the difference between uh, the sky at the top, the color saturation from the top of the sky down to the horizon. The top of the sky is going to be super saturated in color. It's going to be intense because there's less, um, basically there's less ozone and then there's less garbage in the air, if I'm going to be quite honest. Most of the illusion of color is because of the pollution in the air. The pollution in the air will actually make the bottom of the sky much lighter in color. So it's a fun, fun thing when you go outside, you want to look at the sky. One, don't look at the sun. Two, wear sunglasses. It's always very important. And three, enjoy the color. <laughs> Here comes seven class. I know. Thanks, Math. so I appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Uh, Mathur says, in case you didn't know, today is Reese's birthday, so be sure to give him a happy birthday. I sang him happy birthday, so you missed it. It was, it was great. The happy birthday song is actually, uh, is I think is copyrighted still? I think someone bought the copyright um, for happy birthday. So I don't know who bought it. Um, it was supposed to be public domain, but I think someone bought it, so I tried not to sing the actual song. Um, so it's not something I can actually do. Okay, so I'm gonna work like this. So see how much darker this is? So I'm gonna work a little bit. This song is really sad. Hold on. Some pollution, yes, but also regular dirt, dust particles. I, I've i noticed recently, since I lived in the Southwest, which does also have less humidity, depending on your humidity, humidity, humidity levels, um, it also changes the color of the sky as well. Because uh, um, in New Mexico, it's much higher elevation and there's less humidity to hold on to dust particles, pollution, etc. But even here, I've noticed that even if I travel in Indiana and I move further away from um, Indianapolis, which is a fairly large metropolis, the color of the sky changes as well. So we have here, we have a lot more pollution because we have more people. So it changes the color of the sky.
these are just weird things that I notice because I love skies, I love colors and all that good jazz, so. Put a little more color here. Just connect it. Yes, that's also what brings out colors and sunsets and sunrises, too. Yes. Oh my goodness. Mathur says, redeemed a num num. Well, oh my goodness, I, I missed the nummies. Well, I finished one side. Yes. Yeah. No offense to Indiana, but New Mexico has gorgeous sunrises and sunsets. Because they, they're really pretty. Okay. However, um, Indiana has beautiful winter morning colors. Like when it's winter and everything's blue in color, it is gorgeous here. Just, just gonna throw that out there. Are you guys ready for another num num? Where you going, Nita? Don't leave. Don't leave. Your dad redeemed a num num. You guys ready? Okay, oops. Except I'm not ready. You guys can't see any of the kitty cats. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can get a seven to appear. Let's see how Come here. Oh, there's a Mario Kart race. You guys want to play Mario Kart in chat? Come here. There you go, mute. Ada. There you go. Come here. Come here. I know you want it. I know you want it. Oh, there is a good boy. Burn those five calories for five calories back. Yeah. Got it? Good boy. Thank you, Mathur Sis, for redeeming a num num and repeating it in chat for me, because there's no like notification dings. I kind of wish there was. Oh my gosh, Mathur Sis, that's exciting. You've been training Ada to be in your lap kitty for a while now. That's exciting. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of Mario Karts going on now. <laughs> Yes, who will win? Will it be seven with the num nums? Will it be seven with nummy nums? As I talk very sickeningly sweet to my kitty cats. I think this song is actually kind of long, so you guys will actually get a chance to do. Went, seven says, I feel so good that I went to go get sit in the sun. I do love the very intense drum uh, cadence going on in this particular version of the song. I just looked over, there was a gold mushroom. <laughs> Mather says to everyone is taking baths now. Thank you so much for the nummies, because now the kitty cats are very happy and satisfied. So you'll have to let me know in chat who won the Mario Kart race. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So now we've got a very big, we've got dark darks up here. Um, and then I will add some fun layering over here as well to kind of give like a feeling of like wind moving through. And that way we'll also have like a little fun pass moving through. Paper is still cold. So what I will need to do is I will need to let this dry completely before I add any other color on top. So that way I don't bleed into my sky and uh, my sky gets a chance to dry completely. Uh, some artists, and, that, and this is completely up to you, it's your own, um, this is your world. You can do whatever you want, which is exciting. Uh, you can use a hair blow dryer. I don't, only because um, one of my watercolor professors, um, Dr. Jennings, who's an incredible, amazing professional artist, um, she let us know that when you you can do that, but you have to be aware that there is glue inside the paper because this is 100% cotton. So there's a, a binding glue agent inside the paper. So when you hair blow dry um, heavy watercolor paper like this, you can actually break down that glue because you're heating it up and then you're shrinking it back down. So it actually like will seize the paper and create like weird ripples um, and could affect the quality of the archivalness of the paper over time because you did heat up and then let it um, rapid cool um, to let it dry faster. So I don't mind that watercolor takes forever to dry because my first love in painting was oil painting and nothing is as long as that so I'm very patient. So which means that we get to now move to Tom Nook which is exciting. I have been working on Tom Nook. Let me move this out really quick that we are <gasps> hello Meg hello welcome 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 I hope that you're having a good day oops I'm bopping things I hope you're having a good day today just finished with the layer on my baby Yoda so now I'm moving to the hardened <laughs> the hardened war hero of Tom Nook this is my Tom Nook um, doom mashup so it's kind of like moving away into its own thing. It's not really Doom and it's not really Animal Crossing, but it's making me smile and that's what counts, right? So we've got Tom Nook with his, on his, his battle helmet and we have blood splatter across his shoe. The thing is, is that um, this is as far as I want to go with the watercolors, um, but it feels very unfinished because I always intended to add a uh, pin to this as well, so. <laughs> a doll, I love him. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hold on, I'm catching up. Ginger, I've been to Colorado. Colorado is gorgeous. Um, I would love to take you to. Um, if I don't know if Reese went to Pagosa Springs, or uh, I know Lumos can also tell us really fun places. The train from Chama, New Mexico, up into. Oh gosh, where does it take you in Colorado is gorgeous. It's very beautiful and I highly recommend it. Um, I know that you can, uh, there's lots of places. The only part of Colorado I haven't been is like the northern part of the state because I always just basically make it to the middle, which is about where Denver is, and then I just do everything in the lower part. Um, the plains there are really gorgeous, the mountains are really pretty. So yeah, I've been to several different cities. Um, in Colorado and I recommend it to anyone so okay so what we're gonna do now that I've, I'm taking a mental break oh, we're gonna hydrate that's what we're gonna do first we're gonna hydrate because my brain just told me you're thirsty my cats are sunbathing the Sun is out my camera wants to behave it's good, it's good morning. I had to adjust things constantly this morning for my camera, so the only thing I'm missing is I need a red pen for my, my blood. Um, I learned how to make the color for blood a long time ago, actually. Um, it's one of the very first, this is gonna sound really weird. So 
let me back up. When I was in college, I didn't really draw before I got my degree, my BFA. And um, I had always intended to do photography as like my degree. That's what I wanted to go for. But my small college didn't offer a degree in photography. You could get a um, bachelor in fine arts for art, basically. And um, so I learned how to do many, many things besides photography. And now I'm totally in love with it. And this is what I do. But one of the very first painting classes I took was for gouache. I think that's how you say it. gouache. It's French. It's very beautiful. I actually have, I want to do a gouache painting really bad because it's been a long time. So I took color theory and on color theory, they train us how to use gouache, which is a, not exactly the most intuitive medium that you can start people off on. Um, and so I had to learn how to paint, do color theory and all of this. So for a long time, I was struggling in that class because my drawing skills weren't that great, which is okay. I just needed to know I would get better. And two, I've never really painted before. I never had the confidence to paint. So um, the last project that we did, um, she, our professor asked us to do like this weird mashup. I probably have it somewhere. If I can find it, I will post it in the Discord. But we had to do this weird mashup of images and I decided to have a mashup of images that had blood in it. So blood is the very first thing I learned how to make it look realistic on my own. Like I didn't have my professor tell me how to do it. I just figured it out on my own. So if you want to make anything that looks like blood, make it look a little more realistic, be sure to add um, brown to it. You get your red base, you add brown, because that brown acts just like the iron in our blood, because our blood isn't really red until it activates through oxygen by being exposed to the air. So, and it's because our blood is literally rusting. And so that gives it that color. Aha, now I found my red pen. So in case you wanted to know how to make blood, it's a combination of reds and browns and you just mix it until it looks right to you. It's a very weird conversation, I know. But I'm an artist, so I can have weird conversations and it's fine, it's fine. So for that reason, um, it's always stood out to me because I'm like, oh, that's like one of the very first things I figured out how to mix that color on my own, which mixing colors is, I don't know why, for me it was so intimidating. A lot of my classmates just took it to it like, you know, like a fish in a water and I was more like a cat and I was just flailing around. It took me forever. I, I read so many books about color mixing theory and um, I read blogs by artists trying to figure out like how they do it and to be honest everyone mixes colors slightly different um, knowing your um, knowing your color wheel and the relationships between all your colors is really important so so what I'm doing is I am adding I'm not gonna add line work across my blood, but I'm gonna use this pen to deepen up the colors around the edge. That way it makes it feel a little more like pooled up, like it's across. So we're just like strengthening those edges and we're giving it a little dimension here. So we're just gonna, there we go. That way it feels it has a little more depth and we might add a little bit more here in a little bit. I'm also going to do that for the eyes which Tom does not have any pupils, which is kind of crazy. I never thought about it until I started looking at his, his 
pitcher. It's a very, very happy song. I just realized I'm getting watercolor all over me. It's a very happy song and such a dark image. <laughs> Bob Ross says that you gotta have dark to appreciate the light. So. so I'm just gonna use this little color there. Turn it around. So I'm just using these color pens to just add a little bit of color. It really, you can't really see it. Um, but I know it's there, so it will make it look pretty cool once we're all done. Okay. Off to the side. So I will be doing um, a couple different things. For the helmet, I'll be using my fun black eye, like workout, um, workout, line work. It's a workout for my hand though. <laughs> uh, and then for the face underneath, I'm gonna be doing brown, and then we're gonna be adding white on top of that to add bright, bright highlights. Because when you look at a cosplayer who's in a helmet that has some kind of plastic or glass, it actually does reflect light, um, and it's quite vibrant and hot. So that's a way that we can make you assume that you're looking at blood blood's also very shiny and assume that he's in a helmet because right now it just looks like he has some really really uh bad face paint just gonna throw that out there I did not want to be, yeah, I was a lot of majors, but I was never a geography major. No. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's find some browns. We're gonna find some, some brown ink. So I'm gonna use one color um, for the dark and then another color for the light. This song sounds very familiar, but I cannot place it. Oh, it's Mario Kart 64 Holiday Frappe. It's very happy. Oh, Lumos put the information for that trauma ride. Yeah. Mac, I know that you love trains. I would highly recommend that one that Lomos just put in chat. Um, Cumbres to Tol Toltec, I think is how you say it. It's beautiful. It's really, really gorgeous. So, and it smells really good because you're climbing an elevation the whole entire time. And both towns are just the cutest little mountain towns that you can find in New Mexico and Colorado. They're just adorable. Little hummingbird feeders everywhere, hummingbirds just having a grand old time. That's how you know you're in like the right kind of mountain town is they've got hummingbird feeders hanging everywhere from all businesses and restaurants and stuff.
My watch is like, you should go for a walk. I should do that. around it's actually very hard to see but um i kind of like it though it's kind of like if you look really close you get a surprise Ta-da! santa fe is my next train trip i think oh my gosh mac ah yeah uh Lumos can help me. There is some really good restaurants. I don't know if they're still open, but um, there is a restaurant that's in an old train station and they have the best, you have to get the blue corn enchiladas or if you don't like enchiladas, the blue corn, they also have tacos as well. I cannot remember the name of that restaurant, but it is divine and I highly recommend it. It's worth going to because you love trains to begin with. It's an old train station. At least it was last time I went, which has been a long time, I'll admit that. But yeah, Santa Fe is beautiful. It is quirky. It is, it's a unique environment, um, but I love Santa Fe. There's also really good breakfast places if you're a breakfast person in Santa Fe. They're really into breakfast there, which kind of makes sense. So. It makes sense in, in the way that like I, the places I end up falling in love with that I love to visit all the time are usually places that love breakfast. <laughs> uh, Tomasitas. Yes, Tomasitas is, if they're still open, I don't know if they are. It's been a long time is fantastic. There was also, um, I cannot remember the place of it either, and Lumos, I don't know if you would know, um, but there was a breakfast place that had an owl as its, uh, its, I guess its little mascot. It was on their menu. It's not Hooters, I promise. It was way before Hooters became a thing, even before it like showed up in Santa Fe. This is, you know, from the 90s, so to speak. So. Um, but they had really good pancakes. So really, really delicious pancakes. So if you love food, Santa Fe is a really good place to get some really good Mexican food and really good food in general. Uh, Tecolote, yes! That's exactly the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. I may have a list of food places, lol. Yeah, if these places are still open, these are the places that I went to as a child and they were divine. They were really good. But keep in mind, I, oh gosh, it's been many years. Um, but I know that, like, um, uh, Tomasita is, is, like, is world renowned. Like, Food critics go there to eat their food. Like, it's really good food. You can find reviews on them if they're still open. Um, and it's a very high class, like, food. Like, you're gonna get really nice, high quality food there. Um, I'm not sure about the breakfast place because it, it always felt like a mom and pop store to me. So I don't know if they're still open. So, um, cause it's, gosh, I don't remember the last time I was in Santa Fe, uh, early 2000s. <laughs> Just showing my age, showing my age, but I do, I have always intended going back, um, because I want to go back to the, um, Georgia O'Keeffe has her museum there, and, um, I love that museum. It's a really beautiful art museum. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, sorry. The pollen is really high. I thought maybe I could not have that. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> oh my goodness. The pollen count's really high today. So, got the sneezes. Oh, 
but my grandparents used to live in Santa Fe in the Albuquerque area. So. Really dropping the bass with this song. <laughs> kind of sounds like Kirby. Tecolote is closed, but Tomasitas is open from what I've seen. Okay, Mac. Like I said, it's it's one of them was mom and pop store, so I would expect Tomasitas to be open because they are they've been famous for a long time. I definitely go. You're a train buff anyways, you'll love the decor and the food. Blue corn. I can't emphasize that enough. Get the blue corn anything. Whatever you like. They have lots of different options. Um, and if you're not really a heat person, be sure to ask your waiter what they think about the different heats because you can get green chili in a variety of ways. Um, if you get red sauce, so red chili, it's gonna be hot no matter what. So, um, and you can always ask for them to put an egg on top. If you put a fried egg on top of something that's really hot, it kind of cuts down on the heat. So that's a way to get around that as well. So it just hints and tips. Uh, a fried egg on top of enchiladas is delicious. Don't knock it until you try it. It's really, really good. So. Um, my husband's father is also from New Mexico. And um, he loves red chili enchiladas, and he gets like the hot stuff. The stuff that like makes you cry while you're eating it, makes your sinuses clear up when you're done, and then just doesn't, it's so, so hot. And the only way I can eat his enchiladas are with an egg on top. <laughs> Which luckily, um, my brother-in-law also likes it that way, and so when we do have it, I'm usually with my brother-in-law, and so I'm always like, Hey, Sam, will you please make me a fried egg? Because I'm not good at making fried eggs. Um, so that way it's not so hot. And he always makes me one, which is really good. But they're very hot. So um, my tolerance for red sauce is very low. But, oh, excuse me. So I'm gonna set those aside, and I think, I'm trying to think how I wanna do this. If I wanna do like a thick outline first, or if I wanna do that, I probably should do that last, so that way I don't accidentally rub my hand through it. Excuse me. That's exciting, Mac. I hope you have a good time on your trip. So, the Lumos says, burn's so good, but eggs are the best on them, yes. Yeah, if you go to a, a Mexican food restaurant and you're not sure about the heat and you're afraid that even mild sauce, like mild green chili sauce, is going to be too hot, um, ask them to put a fried egg on top of it. I don't know what would happen if I asked that here in Indiana because the Mexican food here is so different from New Mexican food in New Mexico. Just like food in New Mexico, Mexican food is totally different from Mexico because Mexico has a lot more fish in their diet. Um, it just depends on where you go, but I do. It's a good trick. <laughs> I wish that there was a way to do that for Thai food, but there really isn't a good way to cut uh, the heat in Thai food other than just adding extra coconut milk if you're making it yourself. So, because sometimes the curry can get real hot. <laughs> I'm always mildly surprised when they bring me mild because I always ask for mild because anything above mild for me in Thai food, I'm just like, I'm taking a risk that it might be perfect or it might be way too hot. But it always surprises me when they give me mild stuff and I'm still like, wow, you're, you're a lot tougher than I am because this is still way too hot.
Dang, I wish I had a stronger stomach. Uh, Ginger, I can make you... Uh, I still have it on the list because I, I think that uh, Lady Bo also wants them. I will make you guys uh, kitty. I call them kitty uh, enchiladas. Lady Boa has like no heat. She doesn't do heat. It's not her thing, which is just fine. Um, she ate them and she thought that they were divine. So I'll make you kitty uh, cheese enchiladas because you can make enchiladas that even a person who doesn't do heat at all will enjoy. So because when I was younger, that's what my mom did. She, she made cheese enchiladas for my brother and I because we could not handle the heat. And we were very vocal about that. And she would make chicken enchiladas herself. Um, which my mom makes really good enchiladas. So you can't tell that it's 11 something here. <laughs> Talking about food. This is like, welcome to my stream where I sometimes talk about art. And then the other times I just talk about video games, food, enjoy. And kitty cats. So I'm using a felt tip pen, um, which has got a huge nib on it. It makes a beautiful, nice dark mark to create um, an edge here, which will help the blood stand out. It's gonna sound really weird, just the point to this. Um, because there's such a thick line next to, like no lines at all, it'll really make it feel like like the splatter is sitting on top of something instead of the splatter just blending into the rest of it, which is kind of the point where I'm going for right here is that um, I'm gonna make the lines um, of this part a lot darker, the same thing for this nose piece, because I want, one, I want that your focus, and I really wanna make the splatter to feel like it's jumping out. Um, and once we add white, that will also help. Um, and because the nose piece is actually the closest thing to us. So I'm gonna use this outline to help define it and make it darker. So what I'll do is I'll go around the outside too. So um, these nice thick lines can be your friend. Um, if you want less, put less pressure, but if you want it to be thicker, just press down. If you want a line to become a little darker, so this what I'll do is, um, on the bottom here, I'll press a little harder and put a lot more thicker lines down at the bottom. Um, to, I'm just creating an illusion of depth. Look, man, I'm a magician. <laughs> um, but the illusion of depth will really help, and I'll help clean up some of my line work here that I did with watercolor. So I'll even do it around this little, this little nose. Because I like to think that Tom Nook would be like, I still want my nose there. I still, I still want my nose to wiggle. So I need a place for my nose. So my nose will be here. So it's great theme music for Tom. <laughs> So I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to do a line right up to like here and then I'm going to stop because this technically keeps going back but we can't see it so I'm just going to let that fade here. So and we'll do the same over here is we'll just put a line to right out there so I'll mirror it over here. Because I'm human, these are these are not perfect. A part of me is like, man, I could just throw this into Procreate and make his ears perfect and his eyes perfect. But I do like having that human touch, and I am an imperfect being, which is fine. So my art is also imperfect, and I think that's it's usually the art I'm drawn to. So it's the art that I want to do. I'm 
I'm still getting purple all over me here. I'll just put my towel there. There we go. I'm like, where is this purple coming from? So the exciting thing about doing this, not on a computer program, is that sometimes you've got little imperfections that are made from the paint or the pigment, so you just gotta work the line until it feels good. So just keep working this line. is a great place to start. I think I have a dark indigo and it's a uh, brush tip pen. So it's felt all the way in, but you can see how long it is. So I will use this dark indigo for the silver. That way there's some difference between the silver pieces of the helmet versus the rest of the helmet itself. Did you, oh, there's a dad joke. Thank you, Lumos. Um, did you hear about the scientist who was a who was lab partners with a pot of boiling water? He had a very esteemed colleague. Yikes! Yeah, the one time I've been to the ER in college was because of a boiling pot of water. Be careful with your boiling pots of water, kids. And eggs. <laughs> So I'm focusing because I need to use some a hair and some air, as Bob Ross says. I'm trying to put as little pressure to make very make finer lines. Because things up close have are very well defined, have darker lines, and as they move away, they get lighter.
since that's a different color from black, it makes it feel different, especially when we're gonna start adding black to different areas and green to different areas. So, it's exciting. Oh, thank you for saying it's very calming to watch me work. I appreciate it. This is, this is calming for me. It's uh, when I feel anxiety, which we all do at this point. Um, this is where I go. This is why I encourage people to pursue what makes them happy. Um, art is my calm. Uh, maybe building puzzles are your calm. Playing video games are your calm. I always encourage people to do what they love because life is so short, dang it. It's so short to the point where I'm just like, pursue what you really wanna do. However that means by keeping yourself and your family safe and happy, yes, but always make sure that you have a little bit of time every day, even if it's only like 20 minutes, just just to have for yourself, because it's, yeah. Yeah, because you always want to be like, when, when you're, well, I can always envision myself being that grandma, you know, that sits out on her front porch and all the little kids come to, yeah. I want to want to regale stories of being like, this is what I did when I was young. But not that they would listen to me, but <laughs> I don't know, maybe by the time I'm a grandma, I'm still doing this. That would be great though. Okay, so I am looking for a different color. So different pens will have different colors of black, which is crazy to think about. Some are like blue black and some are brown black. So, um, this is a really big, fat, delicious marker. Look how big. This is great. This is also another Copics marker. Um, it's a brush, so this is a brush tip, very similar to Copics. Um, I've got some, I guess they would be um, ways to intake intake valves. I don't know. I don't know how helmets work. Um, I'm assuming these are intake valves on his cheeks, which are kind of faded away. And then, I, of course, I have the divots for uh, the ears as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline these so that way when I put line inside, it'll just help recede it, help pull it back because you'll assume that it is some kind of shadow. So. <laughs> Max says, exactly, call, call me Tom Nook from hell. You're welcome. <laughs> We're the happiest person you can imagine. <laughs> so. Ginger, I'll be the old lady sitting next to you, listening or telling stories. Ginger, you tell really good stories. I suspect you will be returning. Yeah, um, Mac, this is something that I want to make into a secret um, bits uh tier so when you enter in a certain amount of bits you will get this image to appear this is this is why i'm making this one i was excited to mash up doom with tom nook because i was excited to be able to mix some gore <laughs> with a cute the cute animal crossing which animal crossing is so adorable and so punny and so me and then of course i just love the idea i love contrasting ideas so people complain about Tom Nook, but I don't think people look at Tom Nook like this, so. Um, this makes, this is definitely fan art to the point of like, it's my own creation, so. Okay, so that kind of helps that. Okay, so then we'll also use this nice, beautiful, thick line, right? Ah, delicious. Not delicious in the way that you should eat it, but it's still delicious. It's a delicious giant. You gotta be brave. This is your bravery test right here, is using this puppy. Okay. See how, like, it really. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can see it. See how it, like, changed up the dimensions? Now. This is feeling like there's a concave to the ear. Um, so it feels differently. So I think what I'll do, I'm so excited. I'm gonna have to make sure I don't get terribly excited. And so I'll use some hair and some air and we'll do it to the shadows here. Yeah, even with a little bit of air, it doesn't take much. It's such a brave giant marker.
there we go. So that added some depth into the top as well. And I even have like these little like guards. I wonder if I can excavate these really quick. There's a little, little bit of details there as well. This is, this is great. This is lovely, by the way. If you don't have one of these in your tool set and you love ink, I highly recommend this multi-liner. Um, the brush, the medium tip, is excellent. I might use it to outline the rest of this when we're done. Because um, I do want this to have like a very sticker feel. Um, I dream of making this into a sticker. So that way it would be so much fun. I would love to see this particular image out in the wild. <laughs> um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can find, an eight would be perfect. I'm gonna see if I can find heavy lines, although eight might be, yes. Yes, I will do eight and then I will do five and that will be fine. Don't make the noises it's just not nearly as fun so if you do bloop bloops you can have lots of bloops and then we'll just wee a wee away okay. nice now we have a little little bit of grills going on here as we do the other side because I didn't think about right, left. realized I don't know I've listened to a lot of the music that I added but some of it I'm like I don't remember listening to this this is interesting there we go all right so now his ears have dimension the exhaust ports have dimensions No problem, Lumos. Lurk, lurk away. Just going to. Oh, it's Mega Man. <laughs> we'll do this one. This one makes me laugh. <laughs> it's Donkey Kong Country 3, my red hot pursuit. It's by Wintermute from OC. There we go. Alright, so. So normally I would use a lot finer line than using a number five, but since this is so dark anyways, if I don't use really thick lines, you're never gonna see them. Um, so there'll be a lot of detail, but not a whole lot of power and oomph. And since this is gonna be like a sticker and like I'm gonna use it for 
a graphic on Twitch as well, I want to make sure that you can still enjoy the lines. I can get crazy in other projects, but um, I'll keep that in mind. So. Except this is a 005. That was good. It's very small. I might save onto that for. Now I remember why this song is on my on my playlist because it made me giggle. Mathersis and Ginger Manatee, appreciate it. Yeah, the line work helps a lot. This is that's why I work up my watercolor to a certain point because I want it to stand on its own, but I also want to I want my line work and my watercolor to complement each other. Sorry. I got a little hard to see because it's super stark. That's okay. That's what we want. So now that dark part of the mask is done, um, it's, it's a little part that could. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. It's exciting. All right. So what I want to do next is I want to do the brown. Um, the ears are going to be much finer in line than the nose. The nose is closer to us, so it's going to be darker in lines. 
So I think what I'll do is I'll establish the ears first. First. Um, but before I do that, let me take my, since I still have my number five, let me work on this little ridge right here. making me laugh. Okay. All right, let's see if I can find a number number one. Okay, so now that we've added the black to the ears, this really makes the color difference between here and here much different. So that way your brain will absorb the information and what I'm hoping to do is to trick you into thinking that even though there's brown on the helmet, that you'll automatically be like, oh, it's got black on it, it's part of the helmet. If it's brown, it's actually part of Tom Nook. So hopefully that will help um, separate the two right here. So hopefully that will make it work a little bit better. So, what I will do is see if I can find, that's number one, let me see if I can find a number two. I do not have a number two. No, that's okay. Perhaps, let's see if I, if I do this right, maybe I can use this number five. Hold on just a second. I'm trying to find 
Find a happier song. I'm trying to. Yeah, there we go. We'll do that. Just for a little bit. snoring kitties in the background. It's very cute. Look at that, that dad joke is, is good. I'm um, yo! Oh. Sorry, Ada. Hold on. Do you want me to get that out of your way? I dropped. Eva, do you want on the chair? Come on, Eva. Come on. Yeah? Eva. Can you get on the chair? Maybe if I ignore her, she'll get on the chair. I know, because I want more pets, but I know better. I know better than to ask more for more pets. She's a good girl, Ada. The dog, you. Such a good kitty. She's my house panther. I 
love the Foo Fighters. They did a concert here in a hangar in the old base near where the aliens were kept. Oh, cool, the most? That's awesome. <laughs> I bet that was a really good concert. I didn't tell that the pollen's really high today. I like feel it right here in my chest. I'm like, one day, one day those trees won't be blooming anymore. I'm so looking forward to that day. She's just sitting there smiling. So cute. Cheers to beverage. Oh, we can cheers to beverage. Hold on, we got back here. This is to you. Cheers. Yeah, it's been a while since I took a drink of water. We are really close though. We're really close to finishing this. Most of my allergies live like right here. I get sometimes get it up here, but right here is where it likes to live. Thank you, Ginger. I appreciate it. So I'm almost there. I'm just gonna. Excuse me. gonna change it to something really bright since we're almost done. I feel like it needs a psychedelic <laughs> atmosphere. And then we'll go back to, uh, what is it? This yummy pen here? Uh, we'll make some dark outlines. See, that helps help make the green pop, help give it some contrast. I'm gonna set that here. So yeah. Tom Nook from Hell is very close. 
I'll end up putting the, I think I've got time to do the black outline, so. And then we'll be white highlights after that, so. <clears throat> Gosh, this would also make an adorable t-shirt. have to get super close and tilt my head to the side so I can see where my line work is going. So we got, we have the outline all done. For just a little bit, I am gonna go back in. Grab this really quick. <laughs> Got at least 15 minutes, if not longer. Oh, I'm almost done, so I'll finish it. Let's see. 
So I forgot, if this bridge of your hum a sticker and I stuck it on a water bottle, would it stay on there for a while? So my final sticker, you said I sell at conventions, yes. And then you asked, I know your stickers can't go through your dishwasher, but what about regular wash? You can wash them. We wash them. You can, they just don't seem to have any effect. Just don't use an abrasive uh, scrubber on them. So, cause this would make a dope sticker and I totally buy a big water bottle to put all your stickers on. Yes. Uh, as long as you don't use an abrasive scrubber on your, <clears throat> on the outside of it, it, it's fine. It's, it's great. Yeah, the outline looks really great, doesn't it? <laughs> it helps establish, like, the way it feels. It helps establish it and giving it, a, like, a, it gives it a nice contrast between the white and here. So, yeah. And if I want to make it a sticker, this will help me. Huh? In case you want to know this, um, having this nice big dark outline will make it easier when I throw it in Photoshop. Um, so that way I basically erase everything but the nice big dark outline so it'll also establish that as well I like that joke have you ever heard of a music group called cellophane they mostly rap da -dum -ch. eyes just a little bit before I stick white. I'm also gonna flip it upside down and look at it. It's always good, um, especially if you've been working really hard on something, it's good to flip it upside down and look at it from different angles. Um, it's really good if you can put it in a mirror. Um, if you really want to make sure that it has like, if it's really defined. Mirror is a good test, so I don't have a mirror on me, but that's okay. I think what I will do is I will grab. So I can get this to go. So I'm gonna take. Make this blood feel, feel that. But boing! Oh, Ginger, thank you so much for the Fabbits intro, your Playco and Purr, thank you. Appreciate it. I can hear Seven, he's having a big old kitty dream. So now, now that blood feels a little more vibrant, <laughs> that makes me really happy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do really quick before I leave, I need to, I need to finish it, I'm not quite done yet. Let me go over to the interwebs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up, I know it's still in my search engine, do hell of and I'm going to look at the images and see the reflection that is going on on these helmets. So it looks like a lot of the reflection 
is like right in the center. So like right here. So we'll probably do a reflection there. Some really good cosplays of Doom. Some of these helmets look intense. <laughs> like, I can see where people were like building their helmets, you know, um, doing it from scratch. And wow, what an intense. Made 3D models of it too. Admire those who can do 3D modeling. It's really cool. Okay, let me find. Ooh, 3D printed. Oh man, can you imagine 3D printing a helmet? Wow. Oh, your Flaco went well, Ginger. One out of five. Yeah, it comes pretty full. I think it's a challenge. Okay. Bravery test, right? Bravery test. Let me move this back so I can see chat. I'll just put this like this really lightly and I'm gonna let it dry so then I can add another layer so right now it's picking up my ink and my brown so it doesn't look great right now but it will look better once this dries I'll just try to make a nice flat so that will be one highlight and I will let it dry completely. Oops, let me activate this really quick. It's Kirby.
paintbrush really quick. It's got some, some schmutz, some, some browns. Great, recess runs away. Woo. It does add more definition to the helmet. Yeah, it makes the helmet feel like it's an actual helmet. So. it feel shiny. It makes the blood feel shiny too, which is great. So I'm gonna let that bravery test dry. So there's a nice hot highlight right across there. Just gonna still brighter white so that will be good um, I will probably let that dry see how it dries and then define it up a little bit she'll be adding some white shiny right through the side keep working up that bright white highlight um, just need to figure out how to sneak my name in here and this is pretty much looks golden I'm gonna add it as a unique uh, bit alert so when you donate a certain number of bits uh, Tom will show up <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak in my signature here. There we go. Wahaha. That way it's a part of the image and all that good stuff. So alrighty. Okay. I want to thank you guys very much for being with me today. Uh, I will a huge shout out to all of you for hanging out with me all this morning for both Tom Nook and for Baby Yoda, which is looking pretty. I'll show you the colors. Let me slide, slide Tom right out of the way really quick. Uh, you can see the purple has dried really beautifully, and we've got some butterflies happening here. So I'll be adding some more layers. It just takes many, many layers to do what I like to do. So, but this is really nice. This contrast and this butter, the butterflies are so pretty. But yeah, so today we worked on the child and also on pretty much almost finishing, except maybe like one more highlight that I just need to finish. And we also worked on Tom Nook as well. So uh, this means that I'm going through my ending announcements. So I want to give out a special shout out to each and every single one of you for hanging out. Thank you so much for all the biddies and for all my mods being awesome and spectacular. Thank you for also letting me talk about enchiladas because I will never stop talking about enchiladas. That was great. Uh, if you want to, uh, let me pull to some... Oh, Ginger's got me. Haha. <laughs> so I've also got social media. So if you're new here and don't know who I am, I'm Kat. Welcome. I also have social media that you can follow under my channel name called C Nor Art. It's a pun. 
Also, you can follow us for more fun on Discord. And if you would like to peruse through my merch, I do have a Redbubble store. So if something like Tom or like the child is something you're interested in, be sure to send me a message or anything like that on the social medias and be like, hey, I want this as a sticker or hey, I want this as on a t-shirt. That kind of feedback really lets me know what you're interested in and what you want to see here on the channel. Just to let you know, um, Tom Nook was a suggestion. Um, the Doom Animal Crossing mashup was a suggestion from a viewer just like you, which you can do in chat through the catnip toys. So if there is an idea that you want to see here, be sure to just redeem the points. I will write it down and you'll see it in a future episode here, the Seenor Art. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that heart button, follow, like, thumbs up. All kinds of feedback is very, very welcome. And if there's ever a time that you miss something, just check me out on my YouTube channel, which is under the same name, making it super easy. All right, I will see you all next time, uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll just roll right on over here to some end credits. The end credits, as we put the moo meows in chat. Let's put all the moo meows in chat and have a fantastic rest of your day. Remember, I think you're amazing and I believe in you. So until next time, bye.